So you're thinking about moving to Portsmouth, Rhode Island? Well, in today's video, my team and I, we're gonna drop down onto the desktop map on my computer so we can show you exactly what it's like living here in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Let's get started right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is about living in Rhode Island or surrounding areas like Portsmouth, Subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Rhode Island. My name is Devin and my team and I, we get calls and texts every single day from people just like you looking to make their move to Rhode Island and we absolutely love it. Whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email so we can help you make a smooth transition here to Rhode Island. Let's jump over to my desktop to show you around. Alrighty, so as you guys can see, I pulled up the map of the lower portion uh, of Rhode Island. I just wanna give you a little bit of proximity here on the map. So here we are right here, Portsmouth. Again, it's about a 10 to 15 minute drive uh, into Middletown, depending on what area you're going. And then I would say give yourself 20 to 15 minutes uh, 15 to 20 minutes if you're looking to head to Newport, maybe 25 minutes depending how deep into Portsmouth you're living. In the summer, obviously the traffic is a lot more congested uh, compared to the winter months. So if you'll see, um, Portsmouth is very close to Tiverton. It's about a 10 minute drive. It's a 10 minute drive to Bristol as well. Bristol's a very quaint town, similar, I call it mini Newport because it has the feel of Newport. Uh, but uh, much smaller. So you have easy proximity there. And then if you're looking to travel off the island, going up to like Fall River or Boston or Providence, Portsmouth is much easier because you have Route 24 right here that you can follow all the way up to Boston. So that's why Boston tends to be a very popular location for people that are moving and having second homes in the area. So when you come down 24, you're not gonna hit a lot of congestion and you can head right into the back end of Aquidneck Island. So it's easy to get to your home in Portsmouth. It's easy to get to your home in Middletown or Newport. Now, if you're going opposite and heading over towards the Jamestown, North Kingstown, Narragansett area, that's gonna be about 15 or 20 minutes uh, to just get to the start of the bridge. And then it's gonna be another 10 minutes to Jamestown. So if you're going from Portsmouth to Jamestown, you should give yourself 30 to 40 minutes uh, just with traffic, especially if you're trying to get down to Narragansett as well. I'd give yourself about 40 to 50 minutes just because again, getting through this side of town does tend to be congested in the, in the summer months. Now, as you go up through North Kingstown, you're gonna hit East Greenwich. That's probably 30, 40 minutes away. You'll head into Warwick. And then the Providence Airport, I would give yourself 40 to 50 minutes if you're looking to get to the Providence Airport. Again, Providence Airport tends not to be as congested. It's not in Providence. It is in Warwick, but you wanna give yourself adequate time when traveling up there to make up for any traffic or delays you may hit. Now, if you're traveling up to Boston and going out of Logan Airport, I would give yourself two to two and a half hours. Depending on what time of the day you travel to Boston, you're gonna hit a tremendous amount of traffic, especially in the morning time from 5 to 9 a.m. or in the evening from 5 to 7 p.m., especially if you're heading out of the city. Um, depending on what time, what hour, you're gonna have different traffic patterns uh, that you're going to hit. As far as proximity to Westerly, this is gonna be about an hour from Portsmouth. So if you are heading down to the Charleston Westerly area, give yourself plenty of time. Connecticut's gonna be about two, and a two, two to two and a half hours away. And then New York is gonna be, I'd say three and a half to four hours away. If you're going to JFK, definitely give yourself four and a half to five hours with the traffic in New York and leaving, leaving Portsmouth. So let's dive right into the map. Let's get down uh, right onto Portsmouth so we can get a bird's eye view of what's going on. So Portsmouth, uh, these were, I featured this in the vlog video and I talked about this a lot, is one of the things to be very mindful of is Portsmouth has two roads that you leave in and out of. So Portsmouth has East Main Road and it has West Main Road. In my opinion, these roads are heavily traveled and they are two lane roads, but there's no, there's no divider in the middle, there's no barrier. And I think it's a, they tend to be somewhat of a dangerous road because when people are pulling out, making lefts or rights, you have to cross two lanes of traffic. So I'm always concerned driving out to Portsmouth 
uh, on East Main and West Main Road. Those are really gonna be your two main routes uh, out to Portsmouth from the Middletown area. You can of course come up Wapping Road, but at some point you, you need to get on East Main or West Main Road. Now, keep in mind the population side in, size in Portsmouth is gonna be about roughly 17 to 18,000 people. Um, the median price point over there is gonna be around 650,000. So keep in mind that the price points are gonna be more affordable uh, typically compared to that of Middletown and Newport. Now, one thing that people often get confused with is Prudence Island. Prudence Island is right here. That's off of Portsmouth. It is consider considered Portsmouth in the Narragansett Bay here. This area is, n is very difficult to travel to. The ferry schedule is almost non-existent. So to get out to Prudence Island, it is, it is not an area that is of convenience if you're looking to buy out in Prudence Island. So this area reminds me of a potential up and coming Block Island, but due to the, limit, the, the limited availability with the ferry schedule, I don't think it will ever get there unless transportation increases and um, there's, there's more of an option for commuting. Now, we covered kind of the distance and proximity to different areas. What I'd like to do is to cover the neighborhoods that we talked about. So let's start with kind of the furthest point in Portsmouth. So your furthest point neighborhood, this is Common Fence Point. So Common Fence Point, this is a neighborhood, a lot of the homes here um, are on the water right in here. So a lot of these homes used to be kind of cottages and bungalows and people are buying these up because of the price point and what you can buy for the amount of money you plan on spending. The homes here, some need to be fixed up, some have already been fixed up, but this area is a nice area, it is quiet, and it's easy again to drop down into Middletown or exit out of New, or get on the, get on the, on Route 24 and get out of town. So this is the common fence, common fence point area right here. Now, if we drift down the road a little bit, right off of Boyd's Lane, you will have um, Island Park. Now, Island Park, I talked a lot about it in my Portsmouth vlog, but this is one of the few areas where you can buy waterfront property for less than a million dollars. Now, over the past two years, uh, it has really gained a lot of momentum. It's always been one of the areas in real estate that people had expected to gain momentum, but just haven't until recent times. The thing that's nice about Island Park is you do have walkability to uh, a variety of different restaurants like Flo's Clam Shack, Schultz's, um, CJ's Pub, Local Z. There's a lot of walkability here and then you have Island Beach Park. So this area is up and coming. A lot of homes in here as well are being rehabbed. They're being fixed up. But again, they're still on top of each other. They're gonna be more of a bungalow kind of beach cottage style and there's gonna be not as much room in between each lot. Um, I would say the lot sizes are smaller in Island Park than they are in Common Fence Point. So again, these are about five minutes apart, um, but just to give you some proximity, again, it's easy to jump onto Route 24 and head out of town. Now we'll head over to kind of the, we'll call it the Mill Lane area. So Mill Lane, um, it's right over here. So this is Mill Lane. The thing that's convenient about the Mill Lane neighborhood, and this is not a distinct name for the neighborhood, but I'm just trying to give you proximity and understanding where we're located. So I've sold a couple property here, a couple properties here on Mays Corn Road, but the thing that's nice about this neighborhood when you're on these streets is you're right between East and West Main Road. The thing that makes that convenient if you're heading into Newport or Middletown or heading out of town, um, you're in between the two major traffic patterns to be able to jump out um, and get, get out of town uh, or get into town. I find that East Main Road is less traveled than West Main Road. I personally like traveling East Main Road. I feel like it's a little bit safer uh, than West Main, but this is gonna be right about in the middle of where pretty much everything, you know, everything is located um, to be able to get to a lot of things conveniently. Now, one of the areas, one of the neighborhoods that we highlighted in our Portsmouth uh, video was the Aquidnick Club. Now the Aquidnick Club, um, let me just find that. So the Aquidnick Club right here. This is a very exclusive neighborhood. The Aquidnick Club is off of Willow Lane. It is gated, it's a gated community. 
Um, this side of the Equidnik Club has a guard uh, standby till 10 p.m. After 10 p.m., it is key fob only. It used to be 24 hours, but the HOA decided that uh, having somebody through the night uh, was not as cost prohibited as having a key fob after 10 o'clock. So you do have to always go past a guard here. Now, the homes in here, what's nice about the Equidnik Club, again, there's a lot of exclusivity here. The price points here are gonna be, again, in the couple million dollar price range, two, three, four, five, six, seven million dollars. Here on Carnegie Harbor Drive, these, these properties are having, have really spectacular views, um, but are gonna be more, your more pricey properties. Um, if you're buying in the Equidna Club, you do not have to buy a membership. So they offer a social membership and they offer uh, a golf club membership as well. So you can buy in here and do not have to be a part of the Equidna Club uh, buying into the memberships. There is another side of the Equidna Club and I actually sold this house right here. So on Carnegie Heights Drive. Now there is no guard on this side of the Equidna Club. It's only key fob. Um, so uh, again, it is gated. Uh, and these homes are, are exclusive as well. Now, at the end of Willow Lane, there is um, there is an opportunity to um, have a have a you know dock your boat. So if you do have a boat that you like to keep nearby, this is going to be the location uh, for you because you can store it right here at the bottom uh, of uh, Willow Lane. They also have a boat ramp. So if you're looking to you know push out a center console or a smaller boat, you can also access that as well. Now, the last neighborhood that I that I highlighted in my Portsmouth vlog uh, was Macquarie Lane. So this is the Macquarie Lane neighborhood. Um, this neighborhood tends to be a lot more family oriented. Uh, not a tremendous amount of second homes in here, maybe as you get on to William Street because they're waterfront properties. But this is going to be more of your family neighborhood. Um, this is going to be you know, where a lot of families exist, kids, you'll see kids running throughout the neighborhood. And what I like about this neighborhood is there's not a lot of cut through traffic. So you come off of East Main Road and basically you're in this neighborhood. So if you have kids or pets, people aren't driving very fast past you. So it's a neighborhood that you can feel safe in and a neighborhood that I think is probably one of the better neighborhoods to, to raise a family in. Now, those are kind of the highlighted neighborhoods uh, to give you some proximity again, this was Common Fence Point, this was Island Park, Mill Lane was right here, Aquidna Club was over here, and then Macquarie Beach kind of neighborhood was right here. Um, in the Portsmouth vlog, I did highlight a few of the restaurants that I enjoy going to. Um, so here's Rocco's Little Italy. Again, they're really well known for their pizzas. Um, great Italian place. And then right down the road from them, is going to be Fieldstones. So Fieldstones is a popular, I would say, a popular lunch and dinner spot. They are known for their food, known for their their seafood dishes, their calamari, their fish and chips. So these two restaurants uh, are really in close proximity. As we head over to kind of West Main Road, uh, West Main Pizza was another restaurant that I highlighted. Um, so that's going to be up. Let's see. So West Main Pizza is gonna be further up right here um, off of Stringingham Road and Mill Lane. So the Mill Lane neighborhood is very close to it. Um, but again, West Main is definitely known for their pizzas. It's a great spot to just jump into, be able to get something on the go. Uh, they do have dine-in as well, but it's gonna be more of a takeout spot than it is a dine-in spot. Um, so just to, just to let you know. Um, so those are the, the restaurants that we highlighted. Now, as far as grocery stores, because grocery stores obviously are, are very important, um, there's two really popular grocery stores, um, two popular grocery stores in Portsmouth. So you have Clemens Grocery Store. I'm trying to locate it on the map. So Clemens is, so it's somewhere, it's gonna be somewhere up in here. Um, I thought I had labeled it on the map. And then you have uh, the Green Grocer as well. So the Green Grocer is located at 94, uh, 934 East Main Road. And that's gonna be closer to, that's gonna be closer to, um, which we'll call it, that's gonna be closer to Fieldstones. So the Green Grocer is right around here. I think it's this pull off right here. Uh, so that's a great spot to grab like organic fruit, vegetables, um, different drinks, breakfast items, not a tremendously large grocery store, 
but enough for, for grab and go. So I wanted to highlight that. Now things to do here uh, in Portsmouth, and we covered this in the Portsmouth vlog as well. Um, so the first thing you can do is Newport Polo. So Newport Polo is going to be, just catching my bearings. Newport Polo is gonna be off of East Main Road. Again, the polo matches take place on the weekends. If you haven't gone to polo, I highly recommend it. If I, let's open this up, show you kind of a photo of the polo there. So they get a large crowd, great for socializing, great for entertaining on the weekend with family, friends. So if you haven't been to polo, make sure you go to polo and, and uh, visit them. Then you have Newport Car Museum. This is a great spot to visit as well. They have 90, over 90 plus cars. Um, I think going all the way back to the 1950s to, to, to today's age. So this is, they have a wide variety of cars to be able to look at. So I'm not a huge car guy, but if you like cars, that's something you wanna put on your list. Um, Ragged Island Brewery uh, has been under, develop, uh, under development for, for quite a while now. So Ragged Island is right off of uh, Turnpike Ave. So they have a huge, huge location here. They're great for entertaining, that you can bring your pets. So this is a spot that is something to definitely do uh, during the day and uh, something that you enjoy, especially if you like trying different brews. I think Ragged Island Brewery has a, a great selection of different beers to choose from. Now, if you're going into looking at the school system, so Portsmouth Abbey is going to be, let me show you, here's Portsmouth Abbey. So that's off of Corey's Lane. So Portsmouth is, is typically known for their school system. In the real estate world, we call it North Newport because people will buy in Newport, then they decide to have a family and they want their kids to go to a school, a great school system without having to put them in private school. So that's why so many people will travel and buy property, especially locally from Newport in Middletown, buy property locally from Portsmouth because they want their kids in a great school system. Now, as far as wedding venues, um, one of the wedding venues to check out is um, the Glen House Manor. So the Glen House Manor is, um, let me pull it up because I want to show you some Glen House Manor. So Newport is known, Newport and Middletown have, tend to have more iconic wedding venues, but the Glen House Manor, I think is a spot that a lot of people may overlook because it has that Gilded Age feel um, that Newport offers for a much better price point. So make sure if you're looking for a wedding venue, Glen House Manor is definitely going to be on your list uh, or should be on your list of different places to, to potentially have your wedding at. Now let's highlight the beaches. So I highlighted three beaches in my last uh, Portsmouth vlog. So I had Island Beach uh, Park, which is right across from Island Park neighborhood. This beach again, tends to be very rocky. It's a beach that is close proximity to this neighborhood, so obviously very convenient, but I would definitely recommend going into Middletown if you're looking for beaches with better sand, better waves. This is gonna be just a place that is not as desirable as the, as the beaches in Middletown. And uh, so the two other beaches that I highlighted were Macquarie Point Beach. You can drive your car on this beach, as you see in this photo. See, very rocky, full of a lot of shells. So again, this is a beach that you can drive your car on. It's easily accessible, but not gonna be ideal if you're looking for, for sand that you can put a blanket down and, and be able to enjoy. Same thing with Sandy Point Beach. Sandy Point Beach is gonna be a little bit better of an option because it does have, um, it does have the ability to have restrooms and changing rooms. So Sandy Point Beach is gonna be I would say probably the more desirable of the three beaches, but again, you're probably gonna wanna go to Middletown. And just to give you some proximity, this is third beach right here, second beach, first beach coming from Portsmouth. So it'd probably take you 20 minutes to come down. You can come down Wapping Road, jump onto Indian Ave and come in the back way to the Middletown beaches without hitting, uh, without hitting a lot of traffic. So you don't have to come down, you only have to be on East or West Main for a little bit of time. Now, as far as different golf courses to choose from for my golfers, uh, you have Green Valley Country Club. This is a public course. So Green Valley Country Club is a public course. There is a private course at the tip 
uh, the Monotop Country Club is private. So if you're going to golf in Portsmouth and if you're coming from out of town, Green Valley is gonna be pretty much your only option as a public course in Portsmouth. So that gives you a good highlight of living in Portsmouth. It shows you kind of all the ins and outs and gives you some proximity and detail of Portsmouth. If you're looking for more information on living in Portsmouth or surrounding neighborhoods in Rhode Island, all of my contact information is in the description below.